Welcome back. This video looks further at pineapple knots and does include some theory. Fear not, Lisa Burton has produced a recipe book that will save you lots of work. I do hope by now that you've checked out Lisa's documents which are available from the top of the Advanced Grid Maker page. If you take another look at her pineapple knots document there's a link to the recipe book in the quick start section. Let's take a look at a pineapple knot so we can understand some of the terminology that will be used. Here's an example. There are a total of 12 bytes arranged in 4 byte nests. The base knot consists of 4 bytes as you can see here. For each byte nest I've used three strands. From now on you'll need to understand the terms byte nests and strands. Let's see how I came up with this pineapple knot design then. I've reset the Advanced Grid Maker page so I'm starting from scratch. Let me scroll down. I'm using three strands, so for my pineapple knot I need six entries in this coding row. I need three overs and three unders. And if you remember, I normally start with an over, put as many unders as I need, and that will be three, and finish off with the rest of the overs that I need. So that's three overs and three unders in total. I'm using three strands, so I'll use three colours. I could actually use one colour, two colour or three colours but it just makes things easy to see if I use three colours red, white and blue. I'm going to use a small strand gap size 0 0.05 will do. I'll leave the shadow colour as saddle brown. I'm going to need 12 bytes because if you remember it's a four byte nest with three strands, so four times three is twelve. I, I chose twenty-one parts as random. This may not actually work. If I was to refer to Lisa's recipe book, I know what combination of parts and bytes work, so I do recommend that you take a look at that. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Column coding we're not ready to go because we've forgotten that for pineapple grid we do have three nested bright bytes in this case but for three nested bytes we need to shift the bottom byte by one. Now we should be ready to go. Column coding, pineapple grid, let's see what we've got. Now that looks okay but if you look closely here underneath the diagram we've got 17 parts and 12 bytes. I wanted 21. Well to increase the number of parts if I drag this diagram down a little bit I should be able to increase that to 21 and 12. 19, 20, 21. And that's worked. Did you notice that when I did that the number of rows and columns changed as well? I've let's say I've struck lucky by being able to drag that to get it right. I emphasize again if you check out Lisa's recipe book you know what will work and what won't. But when the diagram comes up it may not be exactly what you expected. Mine wasn't here was it because I finished up with 21 parts and 12 bytes and just by dragging this bottom right hand corner I could adjust it it's not an exact science so <laughs> a little bit of practice and persistency is sometimes required but if I show you something now, if I drag this to the right slightly or slightly to the left even yeah I've dragged it to the left, I've still got 21 parts and 12 bytes you notice the rows and columns have changed. I know that I need to adjust the rows and columns without changing the parts and bytes. 
That can be a bit tricky, but that's how it's done. If I wanted a longer pineapple knot, for example, with four nested bites and three strands, I could play with this bottom right hand corner and drag it until I find something. There's another one, that looks good. 29 parts, 12 bites. It's all about experimentation. Yeah, that doesn't look bad, it only uses two colours there, but that's not bad. There's another one. So you can try all sorts just by dragging this bottom right hand corner. Or if you want to be sure you, that you're going to get something that works, use Lisa's recipe book. She put a lot of work into that and it will save you tons and tons of work. One final bit of theory that you ought to understand. We talk about types of pineapple knots. You may not have noticed the different types as you've, as you've been experimenting by dragging the corner of the diagram. So let me explain. A pineapple knot, as you already know, consists of a combination or interweaving of a number of Turk's heads. Where one Turk's head encompasses the smaller Turk's heads, this is a type 1 pineapple knot. Here's an example. The red Turk's head encompasses the other two. When experimenting like this, I would tick the consolidate overs and unders box. Do you remember why? Because it makes the run lists easier to understand when strands wrap round when going from top to bottom. A type 2 pineapple knot is one where each Turk's head is of equal size and the Turk's heads are stacked. Here's an example of a type 2 pineapple knot. The red and white Turk's heads are equally sized and stacked on top of each other. The next type of pineapple knot is one where two or more large Turk's heads of equal size are stacked and encompass the other smaller Turk's heads. The type then is defined by the number of equally sized large Turk's heads. That's a lot to take in, I know. If you again study Lisa Burton's document on pineapple knots, you can read all about this at your leisure, and she does an excellent job of describing what the different types are. Anyway, here's a type 3 pineapple knot. The red and blue Turk's heads are of equal size and they encompass the white and yellow Turk's heads. I'll stop there because this has been rather a long video and there's been such a lot to take in. For more information do refer to Lisa Burton's document on pineapple knots, where type 4 pineapple knots are also described. Thanks once again for watching and I hope you've learned something.